Well, Shosh, it's so good to see you, and I'm excited that I get to share uh, the work you do with Pacom and your passion for community work. Um, I just want to start by sharing how we met. So Shosh and I met because um, I was stalking people on Facebook <laughs> that were connected to community work um, in Israel. Shosh had, and I had a lot of uh, mutual friends on Facebook and I you know, kind of saw what she's doing and I found it really interesting. So I friended her on Facebook and as this happened within about two weeks, uh, Shosh and I ended up in the same, on the same trip for Jewish mothers in Israel. I mean, can you say a coincidence? I would say no. We were definitely meant to meet. So the trip that we met on um, was by Momentum, which is an organization that uh, provides free trips for uh, Jewish mothers who live uh, in America. And they had groups that were in Israel, you know, women who lived in Israel, uh, who were also invited to participate in the trip. So then the women from the United States and Canada have a chance to meet women in Israel and connect. So I posted something on my Facebook and Shosh said, hey, wait, I'm on the same trip. And maybe three or four days later, because we're in different groups, we finally met in person. And um, I don't know if I'm just speaking for myself, but I feel like we became fast friends. And this happened exactly a year ago. And uh, you know, we're always in touch and um, getting to know each other. I find that every time I talk to Shosh, I find more things about her that inspire me um, encourage me and uh, I am so thrilled to share this really amazing person that I feel grateful to have in my life with the rest of the world. So I am um, originally from Chicago. I uh, moved to Israel as a child, uh, went back, moved back for a number of years, a couple of times throughout my life. I've lived in Israel for about two thirds of my life. Uh, I have a uh, bachelor's in psychology and a master's in nonprofit management. And I'm a mother of four grown children, uh, aging between uh, 23 and 12. And I'm busy. I'm a doer. I'm always doing something. I'm always busy juggling a couple of things uh, at the same time. And I just uh, basically do not stop. Why don't we start with what inspires you about Macomb Communities? I uh, became involved with Macomb Communities about three years ago. And um, Macomb Communities is uh, a nonprofit organization here in Israel, which uh, basically serves as a network of communities uh, throughout Israel. We're talking about over 200 communities. And what is unique about this network is that each of these communities is very different from the other. These communities are very uh, diversified. Um, we have uh, religious communities, we have very uh, secular communities, Ethiopian communities, um, Druze communities, uh, educators communities, artists communities, uh, a, a wide uh, range of um, different types of communities. And what is so special about these communities and why they all belong to the same network is because these are communities of people that have chosen to be doers involved in society and really taking care of the needs of the people living in their surrounding areas. And when I say take care of people, I'm talking about uh, whether it's elderly or youth at risk or children, um, immigrants, it's really, taking upon themselves the work that needs to be done. And these are people that really um, separate themselves from politics, from um, differences and you know, religious views, and all work together, each in their own community, with the common goal is we want to make life better for society here in Israel. And this is what's going to make Israel great. And this is how we're going to be able to move forward as people, as human beings. So um, I joined Macomb Communities as um, the Chief Development Officer. And um, 
I also serve as the uh, Jewish National Fund liaison. Um, and I really work to promote the amazing work that is being done in our communities. And I have all kinds of stories, but we'll save that for a little bit later. How do you connect on a personal level as someone who does not live in one of the communities? So yes, I'm not Ethiopian and I'm not Orthodox and um, I'm not an educator and I'm not an artist. So I really don't fit into one of these uh, types of communities, but that's okay because I feel uh, number one, as a person, I'm a doer myself and I try to do better for others, uh, whether it's in small actions or whether it's taking on uh, volunteer opportunities, but I like to do, and I like to do for others. And that's where it meets me and my personal passion. Um, besides that, I feel that um, what is being done in these communities and the, um, the impact that it's having uh, it, on, on people that really need that extra help and, and people that really couldn't do it on their own, I feel like, their behalf and telling those stories and really uh, making uh, these stories become alive. I feel like uh, it's, it's an honor for me to do that and really get those stories out there and, and share with people the beautiful work that is being done by these amazing human beings here in Israel. Yeah, it does sound like really an amazing organization that gives support to people who want to make a difference in their community and the spending volunteer time and this is such an amazing and personal time too right so I, I, when I found out about it I was so interested because this is really like my area of passion is community activism in the way exactly what you're saying not necessarily political or not agenda driven but really just attending to the needs of people who sometimes just lack the tools um, you know, to do it for themselves. And I think, you know, this idea that, you know, fellow citizens can take responsibility for their other citizens, uh, you know, to give them the support that they need is, you know, just beyond moving, really. What kind of impact has Macomb created in Israel? I actually would like to share a recent story. When COVID-19 started uh, in mid-March, so we all basically went into lockdown for about two and a half months. And um, people over uh, a certain age, the, the best uh, advice was for them to not leave their homes, but people got stranded at home. They needed groceries, you know, they needed medications, whatever it was. And um, quite quickly, within days of the initial lockdown, people from these communities uh, realized that it's our job to take care of our neighbors, um, people that we don't know living uh, in our towns and cities, and just make sure that everyone is taken care of. And um, in one of the cities called uh, Arad, which is uh, down south near the Dead Sea, um, one Friday afternoon, um, I, it was actually, um, I was, you know, someone called to, to share with me this voice message. Um, an older woman, she was about um, 67. She was, um, she was an immigrant from Russia. She maybe lived here in Israel for about 12 or 15 years. And she was high risk. And she knew that she couldn't leave her home. And she didn't know what to do. It was Friday afternoon. And she uh, needed to go grocery shopping. And, and she, she couldn't. And there was a knock on her door. And people came with packaged, uh, ready-made food. Um, in these uh, disposable containers and basically uh, gave her food for the weekend. And she was so touched. She said, but I didn't make any phone calls. I, I didn't ask anyone to do this. And basically it was people in the building that were checking up on each other, realizing that she couldn't leave her home and went above and beyond and made sure that she had food for the weekend. And then of course they followed up and they picked up groceries for her the, the, the next week. But this is a wonderful example of how relevant the work that we do. It's not just running afternoon programs or you know summer camps, which of course these are things that need to be done, but it's really knowing how to shift in times of need and turning this, these needs into something that you know within hours or days people can really you know take upon themselves and move forward. And these sort of things were happening 
all over Israel doing during these two and a half months. And it was beautiful to see um, just in each and every city, these, these were like the first responders. These were the ones who took the initiatives and made sure that everyone was taken care of. And if it wasn't them personally, they made sure that someone else did. And it was really this uh, team effort that all of the members of the communities took upon themselves to work together and make sure that everyone had what they needed. As an American Israeli, why live in Israel when you can live in the US? That's a good question. And I get asked a lot about, um, I'm American, I have citizenship, why shouldn't I live in Israel? And don't get me wrong, um, I love America, I love Americans, I love American food, um, and I love visiting in America, but I feel that my life has so much more meaning here in Israel. I can do so much more with, um, with, with, with the needs that are being done. I feel like I can live a comfortable life in the United States, but it's not going to be the same and it's not going to be as meaningful as it is, um, as it is here. So I go and I visit. What message do you want to bring on behalf of the people living in the Macomb communities? I think that the greatest message that the people living in our, um, it's actually 239 Macomb communities all across Israel, is that if we put our differences aside and focus on what we have in common and what we can do together and work together as human beings, we will make this place better for future generations. And um, it's so important to learn not only just to cooperate, but to really connect with other people, even though they're not the same, and even though we don't have the same beliefs, but really focus on, on what we can do together. And that is, um, makes society better. That's an amazing message. Definitely resonates with me. So can you share with me a favorite Jewish quote? Hmm. So a Jewish, um, I'd say that my favorite is love thy neighbor as myself. Um, it's not only mine, but it also connects beautifully with um, our Makom communities, is that it's really uh, looking around you and seeing the people and not saying, oh, he, she is, isn't. It's saying, wow, this is someone so different. Let's see how we can connect. And let's see what we can do together. And um, I guess um, I, you know, personally, I try not to judge people. I know people are carrying different baggage with them for, for different reasons. And I'm, you know, who, who am I to judge? But uh, really, um, really try to just, you know, love people as human beings, as good people as they are. And I feel that the love that we can spread is... Um, something that, especially during these times, we need so much worldwide. Well, Shosh, I wanted to thank you so much for sharing your passion. Um, I do have to say that I feel very honored and thank you for having you in my life. I feel like, you know, you always uplift me and give me so much inspiration of how somebody could really do so much by uh, doing their best. And, you know, that's something that we all can take into our lives. And that's something that, um, you know, I'm learning in our friendship. And uh, I really, I, f I appreciate you taking the time to be my guest today. Thank you. Um, if I may, just add my own personal quote. And uh, that is, a, you know, let today be a better version of myself than yesterday. And, and that's just how I try to live, you know, even if I had a bad day yesterday or things didn't go as I wanted, I always have another chance today to make it even better. And I think if we all try to do that, do more and help more and love more, this world will be a much better place. Absolutely. And it, it, I definitely you. feel that you are contributing to that, to that uh, formula. <laughs> But I'm only one person, and that's why it's so important that so many of us try and do that. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. You. It's a great opportunity. And um, 
looking forward to this uh, temporary situation uh, getting better so that we can uh, go uh, and visit people. Yeah, absolutely. Alrighty, well, I am sure that we will be in touch soon. And thank you again. Thank you so much. Take care. <laughs> Bye.